What's up again, everybody? It's build challenge time again. If you don't know what that is, let me tell you. Take a look at my screen. Come on, this way. Oh, it's already on the screen. What am I saying? <laughs> You're already here. Look, there it is. Okay, so we're gonna hit this random button and it's gonna give us a card. And you're gonna take that card and create a team around it. I, sh I say you, I don't know. I'm gonna take that card and create a team around it. Uh, if it gives us a win condition, that would be wonderful. If it doesn't, like last time, then we do what we can with the team that we're given, with the card that we're given. We build a team around it. This is going to be a modern era team. So it's going to give us a card from the modern era with which to build around. So are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh, Supreme Intelligence, awesome. Let's see, which one is this one? Um, fabricate two five, obviously it's gotta have Kree in the title like all of them. If you fabricated two character dice with Kree, add it to the bag. Oh, it's not the plus one one. Ah, oh, that's kind of a bummer. But it does have the sweet global as well. Pay two once per turn, move a die with purchase cost two or less from used to prep. All right, so you can prep a sidekick with it, which is kind of cool too, but obviously you want to prep a two drop. So if you're gonna run this card, you have to put other Cree things around it. So here are your Cree options. It's really, I should just like Cree space there. You only have a few. So you got Kree Captain Warmonger, two cost fist, does nothing except with the global. Uh, you got two cost fist, Kree Soldier. This is the Swarm Infiltrate one, it's kind of cool. Uh, two cost fist, Kree Soldier, Blue Angels, Swarm, and then prep a die from your bag if he goes through and deals damage. Uh, two cost Swarm. Why did it order him like this with Kree Captain away from the Kree? That's weird. Anyway, um, purchase cost three or less are free to field. Uh, and fielding costs on him are kind of bad. So getting one out there means that your fielding costs across the board are pretty good. I, this is obviously like one of those moments where you just run this Cree Captain. Lost purpose, duh. I mean, the other option is a swarm version, which three cost swarm is terrible. So you never run that one. So obviously that one's going there. Let's max out the Supreme Intelligence because we're going to buy this thing. And it's going to be awesome. I've never bought a supreme intelligence before uh we do want one of the other ones like it's a two five so we can run the three version here and the two we need a two and they're all twos <sighs> do we want the free to field one i don't know swarm and infiltrate just seems fun and this one's probably better because it just makes uh himself and your Cree captains cheap to field or zero to field for free. It's probably better. Oh, but I really want to do this one. Dude, it's my team, who cares? It, the other one's better, but I'm putting this one on there. Swarm and Infiltrate's hilarious. Max out, max out. Okay, so we have 12, <laughs> 12 of our dice are locked up. We only have eight left and we have uh, five more cards to fill. But if this is how we're winning, we're just getting these big old guys and big old guys, and big old guys. Dude, let's just go um, raised shields. Let's just do it. And we don't even really need our bolts for anything, so let's just do it. Raised shields, boom, there it is. We wanna roll it and get the uh, overcrush so that we can make this guy ridiculous and this one ridiculous. <laughs> That's funny, let's do that. I like that. Okay, um, but now what do we do with the rest of this? We got fist, fist, and mask. Um, we also have this ability to the pay two, prep a two drop. We could put a lot of two drops with this. Let's look at some modern two drops. Preferably villains like Parasite and stuff. Jeez, it's gonna be the Parasite show. Let's go zero to two. These are our zero to two options, and then let's change it to characters. Okay, characters that are zero to two. If they're villains, they give uh, Kree Captain a buff. So if we can find some interesting villains. This one also has Infiltrate. It's got two affiliations as well. It's interesting. Let's just jam him on there for now. But let's keep looking. Danny Moonstar is super solid. They're always going to let it through. You can always use the uh, global on Supreme Intelligence to pull her back. She's super solid. You could just run the two cost infiltrate version of her, but she's not a villain, so she wouldn't give the buff. 
If we're also keeping in the villain theme, hmm. We got what? Masks and fists again? Masks and fists. Psylocke for getting a sidekick out. <laughs> you could run the four cost Psylocke that people hate. Where's the. Oh, it's a two. Yeah, we're looking at twos. I mean, this card's amazing, but it doesn't do anything. And it's not the point of the team right now. What is the point of the team? More infiltrate with villains. I mean, it just makes sense, right? If we're pushing over crush damage, he just adds to that. And he's a villain. Ah, oh, come on. Okay, I'll just do it. <laughs> I'll do it, and you can complain in the comments that I've added Parasite back on again. <laughs> Fine. Let's see. Oh, we don't need four Kree Captains, I guess. I want four Kree Captains. We do need four Kree Soldiers. Three of these seems fine, two of those seems fine. This was in the uh, the team pack, so you might not have three, so let's just bump it to two. Make it easy for everybody. This was in the box, so you have two of those, so let's leave it at two, seems fine. Because I want you to be able to play this team as well. People, I want you to. I mean, other villains that are good. Arnim Zola. He also provides bolts for the bolt global on raised shields. Battery battle stack's good. Obviously, Yanti makes a lot of sense, but we don't have the like the setup. We're not really going for playing actions. Probably want to consider control. Oh, and there's also we can turn off the twos now. I mean, we can pull this over. Not sure we really want to because it's it's swarm though. But this seems fine. Send it through for three, and then pull it back. We never really used that on this one, though. Are there two cost actions? That would make sense. Kobold Trap. Hmm, they're never fielding an adventurer. Do I want to pay one to sit this out in the field and hope that my opponent fields a level two character die at some point so I can get a to drop for free. Not really. I was thinking Atlantis. Like this one. Fist shield for preps as well. It knocks off the ramp a little bit too. It gives us sort of a ramp option. I mean, why not, right? We can move any number. So we could even do something where we like rolled a board out, um, fielded what we wanted to, play the action, move like one thing that didn't roll, and then pay two on our opponent's turn to uh, move it over with the global on Supreme Intelligence and do it again next turn. I could see that. We would need like some heavy ramp though, and this is not providing that consistently. Provides it a bit. Hmm. I guess we are technically using an action if we're planning to buy raised shields. These are all super cheap. But our goal is to buy Supreme Intelligence and kill our opponent. So I guess if we like miss those rolls or anything like that. I guess with these kinds of teams that are a little bit more casual and less competitive, I guess it's just really good. Like <laughs> it's just really good to include cards like count oh my god, I can't type. Counter strike. <laughs> Just cards is like still really good. It's like a two drop that you can purchase and you can move your villains over. <laughs> I mean, why not, right? If you've not played with Counter Strike, you should. I think I put that on my underrated list. I think that card's really good. <laughs> Get yourself some more Counter Strike. Let's go. Okay. Uh, probably just want a lot of ramp. I don't know. Do you want a lot of ramp? These are all super cheap. That's something that makes Infiltrate better, because you're going to be buying a lot of these so that you can get a lot of the Supreme Intelligence. 
Supreme Intelligence is. This is all predicated upon you having two boxes or two uh, team packs of the Kree Invasion. If you don't have two Kree Invasion team packs, this is not going to be nearly as effective, right? So hope, hopefully you bought the uh, second set for those extra dice. If you didn't, then you can just pretend. Just proxy some dice. No one cares. I don't care. Do it anyway. Uh, in, no. Infiltrate. So like I'm thinking the... Where, oh, I'm still stuck on the twos, aren't I? Yeah. Come back, mouse. I was thinking the what's-her-face. I mean, obviously, Angela makes a lot of sense, but I don't have that card, and I'm not going to expect you to have that card as well. If we got the Infiltrate, we might as well um, run the Ricochet. If you don't know this, Ricochet Slinger has Infiltrate and also preps your dice for you, which is pretty cool. Which kind of makes Atlantis obsolete. Yeah. So you're not getting shields much. This is more bolts. Let's let's remove Atlantis. But I was thinking, where's the where's the rogue? Give everybody infiltrate. <laughs> hmm. Four drop with infiltrate now. She deals two. She's always getting blocked, though. So she doesn't really work well for Infiltrate. And she's expensive to field. Man, maybe we maybe we just switch to the other one. Because it makes all of our two drops free to field, right? Are three drops and lower? Is it three and lower? I can't remember. Let's look. Cree Soldier. No, not this one. This one. But he doesn't have Swarm. I think we do it. I think we switch. I think my mind has changed. Right? But then there's no re- <laughs> There's no reason to run this then. What? Because you only have one Infiltrate character and it's not built into this card. Dang it. Um... Because he was, before, this was acting as ramp with Swarm. Now he makes this free to field, this free to field, which obviously has two paying sides. This free to field, which has a ridiculous top side. And this free to field, which you have to pay a, as well, just a ridiculous top side. I think we just cut this shell. I don't think that makes any sense. This one's a little more stumping because I guess like let's go back to the, the basics right what's our goal our goal is to like get a bunch of these guys right fabricate them out buy up these things which have good stats uh, we'll go into the bag come out quick and hit them with these big old seven sixes that are buffed with raised shields so yeah we probably do want the other one that has swarm so we can do that because we don't really care about don't really care about making these things cheaper. This parasite doesn't even really matter. I mean, it does kind of because you're pushing the overcrush damage on these guys. Yeah, so villain, and it's a villain. So yeah, in this context, now you do have another sort of avenue of attack with infiltrate and swarm being your things. But again, your goal is to buy this, to buy this, and then to fabricate for these quick. So what do you need? Still need to bag prep, because I think that's like one of the most important things in this game. So we can keep including Atlas because we have fists. I think that makes sense. It's interesting. The past two have uh, the past two of these videos have made a place for Atlas, which is kind of nice. Why is he not oh he's a six? There he is. There's been a place for why are you not loading? There you are. It's interesting that uh, both of these teams have ended up with fist characters and uh, <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's just because I keep running Counter-Strike. Maybe I shouldn't run Counter-Strike and just run uh, like, I don't know, create food and water or something. But a bag fixer is super important. And you're going to have fists, especially if you're rolling these on uh, not character faces, on energy faces to trigger all the swarm and stuff. 
other villains that we can jam onto here to buff up your 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 Cree captain or things that make this guy harder to deal with villain character dice. I don't know. Villain. You can you could run like this avalanche, which is really good. Especially if you field up all of your stuff. That's not a bad idea. Let's do that. Because if you're going to be buying like these guys, at some point you're going to field them so that you can KO them for the fabricate effect. 2-5, meaning you KO two of these characters. This one costs two, and this one costs three. That adds up to five, so you get this for free. And the nice thing about that is KOing both Kree things puts this into your bag. So you are going to be fielding characters at some point in some way, shape, or form. So having like rare avalanche to field and clear your opponent's board of like sidekicks makes uh, it possible that you don't even have to reach for the raised shields because you've got these big things coming through constantly. This still makes sense because you're putting that uh, attack damage onto, I don't know, like a random Kree soldier or Kree captain that's already just super strong because of these villains that are in the field. And you're providing at least, I mean, this counts itself. So let's say him, and then you have one of these, and then you have this, and then you have this. That's four, and so he's, he's a 7-7 seven, seven on top. 7 attack all the time because he's got 3 all the way across his attack stats. So this makes sense, right? All of this makes sense. I'm happy with most of this. Maybe like two of those avalanches. And again, I'm going to avoid doing the low hanging fruit of just going like shriek, right? Because that would be easy. Though it'd be fun to run a different shriek. Maybe we just like run this shriek. That'd be fun. Or since we're pushing, um, attack damage like physical damage we could just do this like what globals are we using i guess the only thing it would turn off would be the pump global but we could do that beforehand yeah no that seems fun okay let's run shriek sandra deal the one that never gets run that's awesome that's super cool because again we're not using any of these globals in the attack step we're using this to purchase in the main step it lets us get avalanche a little cheaper we're using this to prep again in the main step. We can technically use this in the main step and buff one thing or spread that damage out, make something a little bit more threatening, then field something like a Shriek Sandra deal and not let them use cards like... Oh, stop, no, go away. Not energy field, what am I doing? Um, static field. Not let them use cards like Static Field Global to push back our big attackers, right? That's pretty cool. We would need some way to cycle this. I guess technically you could fabricate her out because you don't have to fabricate just Kree guys. Oh, no, yeah, you do, yeah. At least one of the fabricated character dice must be a character with Kree. So technically you could fabricate like Kree Soldier Shriek and grab another one so you could set it up again next turn. That's interesting. Hmm. Now we don't, I mean, I guess our only ramp is this two cost swarmer and counter strike, which is probably enough, honestly. Probably enough. Let's see, you could do something like turn one yeah, you could go like turn one Kree soldier, turn two counter strike, prep with Atlas global, turn three roll Kree soldier and counter strike, field a Kree soldier on its level one side for free. Um, roll the counter strike as an action. You would have three dice left over, so you can only buy one Kree soldier. That sucks. Or maybe you just roll this as the double fist so that you have um, five dice or five energy. You buy two more Kree soldiers for four, right? Play Counter Strike, prep one of them, then you would uh, move one of them to the bag. You'd have one energy left over. You could uh, pay that energy for this to prep a sidekick, or you could prep uh, with a fist and pull that. No, you wouldn't want to pull it out. 
Oh, you, it's going to have to pull out at some point. Pull the Kree soldier that you put in the bag. That seems like an interesting line. So that'd be like a good turn one, turn two, two, turn three, and you'd have three Kree soldiers. It's possible. I feel like I'm rambling on this one. I feel like I got to fill like one more slot. And like, again, a good high impact, low drop villain character to go with this. To go with this. We already got this one, which works really well with Supreme Intelligence. Let's just jump back. Two drops. Affiliation, villains. Look, I always liked Jervis Tetch. That card's really good. That's just one of my cards. That's like one of my favorites. This one doesn't make quite enough sense, even though it's really good stat-wise. Doesn't make quite enough sense. You could do the Toad, the four-cost Toad. But again, we are running villains, so we can't name villains to pull out like Shriek or whatever. I mean, technically we don't have blanking either. So if they blank, like, I guess none of this really matters to be blanked. Like this one, that would suck, but you, you're supposed to be getting these on this team. And the stat line, you can't blank, right? Removal. There's not an intimidator, is there? Intimidate? Yeah, only blob. Hmm. What about like... Um, Deal, oops. Deal damage. Huntress, maybe. She KOs a Shriek. It's not a bad option. It's a pretty good option. Gives you a Bolts as well if you miss her. Someone's mowing outside. <laughs> hmm. Now you're getting into really expensive territory up here. Yeah, maybe you just run Huntress. Good ol' Huntress. Good ol' three-drop common Huntress. Where's she at? No rest for the wicked. 18, so you can run like, one Shriek, one Her. And so what is this? I kind of like this team, man. It's kind of a cool team. All right, so what's the goal, right? So you've got... I've said it like four times. You're going to fabricate out your character dice, right? You're going to fabricate out this Kree soldier that has Swarm and this Kree captain. You don't even really need to fabricate the Kree Captain because you can go Kree Soldier, Shriek, or Huntress. And you're going to buy up the Supreme Intelligence. And when you do, if you do the uh, Kree Captain, Kree Soldier version, when you do that, you get to put this in your bag. The goal would be to just get a bunch of these things and just throw them at your opponent and then make them over crushing with raised shields. If your opponent has like a wide board, and you can't get raised shields, at least you can go like the avalanche, paying off the board by fielding a bunch of these Kree soldiers route. You can do this. This uh, fields and deals damage to a Shriek. The only time this doesn't KO a Shriek is if this is level one, and this is uh, like a Shriek is level two or three, which is possible. So if you roll her on level one, then you consider trying to re-roll her for either bolts or on her one of her other levels. Um, so if you roll her on bolts, then she can uh, buff one of your character dice that you push with. But you also have Shriek, so your opponent can't blink your stuff back with like a mask global that pushes them out of the field or out of the attack zone. Uh, you've got bag prep here. Probably the weak link here is this parasite. Maybe you switch this out for something that uh, does a little bit more and is a little cheaper to field because obviously on top this is a uh, two, three, four. But you can assign that three attack damage to any like little guy and all of a sudden it becomes more threatening. Like this parasite alongside of this level one or level two Kree soldier is now a four attacking die. Which is not bad, right? Uh, Counter-Strike is still all very good, super duper good. Yeah, I like this. So if this is the card you were given to build a team and saying that you have to build a team with this card in mind and your goal is to win with this card or it's to feature this card. What would you do? Would you build a team like this? What changes would you make to this team? Put a team link or some comments in the comments section below telling me what you think about the team that I created, how you would change it, what you would do instead, why I'm terrible at team building, anything you want. 
feel free to leave a comment and uh, let me know how you think these videos, uh, this whole series is going. As always, thanks for watching.